Ladies and gentlemen, this is internet personality Vangelis and Voodoo Toys wanted to kick off their unofficial transforming robot efforts with an iron hide and a ratchet. And then official masterpieces were announced. But the lack of Hisui involvement has left some fans still looking for alternatives, so here we are. I've got the stealth deco version of Animus on loan from Madhouse Toys. This was released at TFCon Charlotte 2015 as a preview of sorts, and to get Voodoo's Potion series into people's hands for the first time. This is, basically, a Diaclone Colors masterpiece-oriented Ironhide. Let's see if Voodoo were able to pull off some magic on their debut piece. Before we get right into this, here's the van mode, and you see he's got all these little, like, holes here, which, uh, as I understand it, are from the molding process, like, I guess this is where plastic is injected in the steel molds. He's got these little holes everywhere, and there's some up here, too, right there, and then the same ones over on this side all over again. So, they have this filler kit on this, like, teeny tiny little instruction sheet, uh, telling you where to plug some numbered plugs into those holes, right? So I think, okay. How are they going to number the plugs? Well, here are uh, all of the plugs. There are these four, like, busted off pieces of, of sprue. Uh, the numbers are printed on the back. So, so here's the front of the plug, right? Hang on. This is this is real tiny. Um, let me get the focus all up in here. So that's the front, right, of the plug. On the back, there is a number printed. So uh, if you can see it, that says 5 and 5. I think it's five. I think it's the four fives. Cause there's, yeah, there's four fives. So this one is uh, four number fives, and over here we've got a three and a four and a three and a four. Then on this one, these are the four number sixes. So there's four number sixes. These are all four number sixes. Uh, then this is uh, seven, eight, twelve, and eleven. Okay. And then this one should be two number twos and two number ones. So. Using those numbers and this little guide, every all of which is, is tiny, very small, uh, I'm going to try to stick all those things into this guy and uh, you know, trim them off these sprues and jam them in the holes, and then we'll get into the review proper. Don't wait up! This is a good-looking Iron Heidi 80s van. The front windshield has a bit more of an angular slope to it that could have done with being a touch flatter, but Animus has got the right kind of box-on-wheels automotive bread loaf motif going on. The copious clear windows and sunroof use a smoky translucent plastic that finds a nice balance between the intended effect of being clear and avoiding showing too much of the folded robot inside. There is a big lumpy plank along the underside of the center third of the vehicle mode that looks a little unsightly, but I'm happy to see that it doesn't impede the van's ability to roll. And this guy looks pretty swell alongside the other Hasui Masterpiece alt modes, albeit in that toyetic mushy vehicle scale they tend to follow from the cartoon. Let me say it up front, Animus has got some panel stuff going on. His lower legs and backpack are panelicious. The larger shafts and chunks have got some micro ratchet rotations built in, which help keep things solid and not flopping around. And that's great because you pretty much have to split the rear third of the van mode in half and then turn each half inside out to form the lower legs. The major tricky part is the multi-swivel L-hinged panel, but all that stuff actually tabs together at the end to form a solid shin block. The rear panel doesn't really tab in, so much as wedge in, but the end result remains quite solid. It's a very cool idea to form columns out of the back end of a van. Complicated to be sure, but it makes a lot of sense once you go through the process yourself. By far the most difficult thing to do in this entire conversion is freeing up these front door panels, as they are wedged in tight in two different places. In my experience, nothing feels like it's going to disintegrate or snap apart, but there's flex involved and you should be ready for that before getting your fingers into these particular moving parts. Remember to pull down on the front bumper parts to get them under and around the underslung hooks. And then enjoy a moment's reprieve as the arms simply swing down and forward. The forearms pull the classic panel hidden fist deployment trick and are exactly the kind of break you need before finishing things off with the backpack. There's a rhythm to this shindig. Before really digging into that backpack, you're best off breaking the usual stock footed transformation order of operations and getting the head up and in place right away. And while I've been setting this up as a crazy hard deal, the backpack's motions are quite logical. It's really just tricky to get the inner T-shaped tabs lined up. Remember that the foldover is on a double jointed hinge. Anyway, here's the big surprising bit for me. The final backpack just wedges in there. I can't find a single peg-to-hole or tab-to-slot connection to line things up. You just kind of jam it in there and eventually it'll lock in. When it works, it's fine, but I was really looking forward to a satisfying final locking mechanism, 
and it's only implied at best. Animus stands up as a masterpiece-oriented Ironhide and has a pretty good silhouette despite some legit deviances from the G1 cartoon's robot model. These majorly set him apart from the upcoming official masterpiece, with the biggest bother being the presence of his rear windshield atop both of his feet. However, his slimmed down chest and pelvis tweak that animation model towards something a bit more generically palatable, and Animus does the one thing I cannot believe the masterpiece is not doing, which is removing the front bumper from the main chest bulk. It splits, folds away, and ends up on the backpack, out of sight and not making his chest look even weirder and bulkier. The stealth diaclone color scheme brings in some welcome shots of bright red in robot mode, almost acting as an inversion of the regular Ironhide deco. The helmet sculpt is real nice and mohawked, but the face sculpt has got these unnecessary lines running down along the cheeks, which mix with the awkward expression in a very unfortunate way. If ever there was a time for alternate faceplates to swap in, this is one of those times. Animus has two different guns, a black blaster and a silver missile thingy that's based on the equally weird silver missile thingy that the G1 Ironhide toy included. Both weapons tab happily into Animus' palms, and either weapon can also be stored on an unfoldable spot in his backpack, which unfortunately doesn't work super well. The fit is a little finicky, and I find the weapons just look awkward back there. Between that and having nowhere for them to go in vehicle mode, I'd rather leave them off to the side if they're not in use. Animus has a really nice ball-jointed neck. Like, there's big range on here. It makes me pleased. It was kind of sticky on this guy right out of the box. Uh, just really stiff, and it's the kind of joint which is perfect, for adding like a toothpick droplet, like toothpick tip droplet of this stuff. I, Tokenation has a video up about it. I stole the idea by watching their video and acting upon it. Anyway, that made this really nice, that little bit of shock oil. Um, the shoulders are on a very lightly ratcheted forward and backward joint. And then there's a separate clickier ratcheted joint for going outwards which uh, makes for a nice underarm when you've got them rotated up, and it's just generally pleasant. Uh, there is a bicep swivel, and then there are two elbow joints, uh, both very softly ratcheted, one at the elbow and then one kind of up here, the top of the bicep, to allow for a double-jointed look, and also to give you just some tweakable overall arm curvature. Uh, the wrists can swivel, and uh, they can form, the hands can form either a, a decent, kind of funny looking fist or a decent, kind of funny looking open hand. The joints here are a ball jointed thumb, and then uh, there's a hinged piece of three fingers here. And then you've got yourself one of these little trigger finger deals where uh, the index finger is on its own hinge, and there's another hinge here so that he can kind of point, which is cool. Uh, the only weird thing about this is that this piece is still curved, and uh, it would have been cool if this was a touch straighter, but then it wouldn't have flowed as naturally when his hand isn't trying to point. So they, they hit a, a pretty good median here uh, between all the different finger curvatures. There's a waist joint, and then if you untuck his shirt, you get uh, a big ratcheted ab crunch, which is one of the transformation joints. But it is pretty good at doing this kind of thing. You just end up with, as I said, an untucked shirt kind of look. So if you want to fix that up, then you just got to get these things back under there so he looks all professional and ready for work. His hips have got these skirts in front, which can get up and out of the way. They're on uh, little swivel hingey type things. Uh, I think it's like a mushroom peg inside the crotch. But that means you can get them out of the way of the hips, which can click ratchetedly forward and a little bit back, only about that far back. But that's just far back enough for some good hero stance stuff. And uh, he can totally kick. He's got outward hip motion, which, which has uh, some ratcheting that is a little bit soft, so you can kind of get between the clicks. Thank goodness for that, because it is one, two, three, four clicks to go out. That same number of clicks is like, you know, the ongoing story of 2015 and toys where their first ratchet click is just a little bit too far outwards, like one in between here and here would have been totally perfect. There's a thigh swivel up here, a little bit uh, impeded by the shape, the, the kind of angular shape of the top of the thigh. The upside is there's another swivel down here below the knee joint. This is ratcheted and this helps a ton because like standing like this, he looks a little bit funny, but if you click each of these outwards once, he looks great. Uh, there is a knee joint as well. Again, nice and clickety ratchety. Goes uh, the full 90. And then uh, down here inside his feet, when you saw him transform, there are all these joints in here, and they all can kind of help 
orient his foot to various different planes and, and shifts of position. There is also a big ankle tilt, and his feet are big flat panels, so he is real good at just, like, standing solidly and looking like he's gonna pound some of them classic old deceptive chops. So, uh, the posability on Animus is pretty good. Uh, it flows well, there's a lot of uh, well, well done ratchet use, there is some slightly questionable ratchet use here in the outward thing on his hips. This is like common to so many groups and designers and everything right now that I, I, I don't know what's going on, but hopefully it can be resolved in 2016. As for build quality, this guy is real stompy and durable, despite the fact that he's made of a whole lot of panels of clear plastic and non-clear plastic. He holds together pretty nicely. Like, all things considered, the only thing that can get jostled is that backpack. And even then, you can pick him up by the backpack, and, like, it'll hold if you're using it as a means to lever the guy around. Uh, you can shake him pretty well. Nothing really comes loose. If you shake him by the backpack, that might come loose. But even then, you have to get pretty wild with it and, like, tilt him forward and uh, mess with the hinge of that inner arm to get the thing to unseat itself from its in-wedged position. But uh, I haven't seen any stress marks on him or anything. Um, this is just on this copy that I've been messing with. And I've been messing with this for a good, like, week and a half. So I feel like that's a good gauge. Go check the feedback thread if you want to see how other people's have turned out. Or feedback threads, depending on how it is you like to take in your Transformers online. But uh, Voodoo Toys did a good first job here. They've, they've made a good base to build from for their next release. There are two major topics to close up with in this review. How did Voodoo Toys' first release turn out? And is this the Iron Hide for you? Let me frustrate you with my answer to the second part. This isn't THE Masterpiece Ironhide, but it is clearly a solid alternative if you aren't digging the looks of the official one coming out in a few months. Animus has taken the other side of the fork in the road on several aesthetic decisions in his robot mode, so if MP27 isn't aligning with your personal tastes, see if Animus does any better. I can't comment on whether or not the transformation process is better or worse since, well, nobody's played with Masterpiece Ironhide yet. But that transformation is the biggest talking point as to how this did as Voodoo Toys debut. It is a clever process, loaded with panel folding to be sure, but mostly in the service of very cool ideas like the formation of the robot mode legs. However, that final rear leg panel lacks a finishing tab slot lock I was looking for, and the backpack straight up wedging in place was very similarly disappointing. Voodoo's working some cool transformation magic, but needs to be sure not to skimp on final locking details, especially when the journey of the conversion has plenty to spare. Otherwise, this is a fairly solid debut piece. Nothing feels fragile or rickety, particularly given how many plates and panels are involved. The posability is alright, though I would encourage Voodoo Toys to take the advice many of us have been giving to a lot of different designers this past year, which is if your outwards hip motion is only three or four ratchet clicks, just make it a friction joint. Going from Soldier at Ready to Yamaguchi Pelvic Thrust in one click is terribly limiting to the emotive range of a figure's posability. That said, I love all the ratcheted rotational sections in the knees and feet, and the overall build quality seems to be in the solid mid-range of the unofficial market. If Voodoo Toys build upon Animus and Salus, setting their bar as one to be improved upon in their next effort, I think they could definitely go places. They've got a very solid start, and very clear things to improve upon. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this has helped add some talking points to your own Masterpiece Ironhide deliberations. There's only so much to consider until MP27 gets into people's hands in a couple of months, so let's join hands and dive into a 2016 chock-full of Texan robot options together, ladies and gentlemen.